Hey there, it's Dr. Justin. Welcome to part two of the truth about fish oil. So kind of recapping, we talked about cod liver oil versus fish oil last time. Cod liver oil is great, very high in vitamin A, very good for the thyroid, very good for the immune system. Again, therapeutically, if we're trying to reduce inflammation by giving EPA or eicosapentaenoic acid via fish oil, we're gonna have three to four times more in fish oil than we are cod liver oil. So we wanna really reduce inflammation by using fish oil, but cod liver oil may be something that you still wanna give. It's a great multi-support because it's very high in vitamin A, and if it's fermented, we'll have other great nutrients in it as well. Again, we talked about last time, flaxseed may not be the best, especially if you're inflamed, because this pathway here, this is flaxseed oil right here, this is flax, ALA, or alpha linolenic acid, this conversion has to happen with delta-6 desaturase and that enzyme gets significantly reduced with higher inflammation and or with insulin resistance. And if you're vegetarian, there's a chance that you're eating excessive carbs because a lot of the proteins that we need to combine proteins together, so like if we're doing rice and beans, you get 15 grams of protein, but you also get 80 grams of carbs. So there's a chance there's some insulin resistance happening while you're eating that type of way. So we also talked about the, fat, the fatty acids here. We have our prostaglandins. We have one, two, and three. Again, our prostaglandin one and three, these are gonna be our anti-inflammatory pathways. So you can see on the omega-6 side, we can actually have some inflammation reduction with prostaglandin one. And we may see this with evening primrose oil, black currant seed oil, or borage oil. And it's very helpful for skin issues with, with female patients that have hormonal imbalances. So prostaglandin 1. We may drive an inflammation reduction with EPA or fish oil. So very important. We can drive it with both. This is going to be your best bang for your buck, the omega-3 family, for reducing inflammation. Again, we have the DHA fat. This is also really, really important for brain health. This is very high in, in women's breast milk when they're breastfeeding. They're gonna be giving a lot of DHA to their child. It's very healthy for the nervous system and brain formation. So we wanna make sure that if you're breastfeeding female, you wanna make sure you're supplementing with high quality DHA fish oil. This will allow you to pass enough fish oil to your um, baby, but also allow you to retain some for your own neurological and brain health. Very, very important here. And if you're vegetarian, you really want to make sure you're supplementing with an algae-based DHA. This is how fish accumulate DHA anyway. So you want to make sure that you're consuming algae and don't hope and pray and cross your fingers that the flax will convert downstream. Definitely not the way to go. You can see these, the various enzymes that convert PG1 to 2 or 3 is basically a COX enzyme. And that stands for cyclooxygenase. So for instance, for the PG2, that's cyclooxygenase 2 pathways. And again, a lot of the medications in the early 2000s, especially a famous one called Vioxx, Vioxx was a COX-2 inhibitor. So it reduced inflammation by knocking out this prostaglandin 2 pathway, but in the process, that COX-2 enzyme, that cyclooxygenase enzyme, was really important for stomach health and also heart health. So by knocking out the cox, we reduced inflammation, but we also created increased ulcers and increased risk of heart attacks and strokes. That's why it was pulled off the market. It killed 60,000 people. So again, we want to use things that aren't going to downregulate the enzyme because when you do one thing, it's like whack-a-mole. You whack it down here, but then two more come up over there. So not a good thing. If we use fish oil, we can, we can modulate this EPA which can then modulate prostaglandin 3 and significantly help to reduce inflammation. Again, cod liver oil will be helpful, but not gonna be the best for reducing inflammation because it's three to four times lower unless you use a liquid cod liver oil and really do a couple of, you know, three, four, maybe five tablespoons per day. Again, my recommendations for inflammation are gonna be anywhere between four to eight grams of omega-3 fatty acids per day. And that's gonna be primarily the EPA and or DHA. But EPA, typically I'll give it with the EPA and DHA there in its natural ratio. So four to eight grams, really important. You get what you pay for when it comes to omega-3s. See lots of people going out and buying a Kirkland brand or just a, a very, very low cost. You get like 500 capsules and you know having 
relationships with supplement manufacturers, I understand the actual cost, the actual, you know, bottom price to buy high quality fish oil. And a lot of times what you're seeing at Costco or Kirkland's is you're seeing a price that's even below what it would cost just to get high quality fish oil at the bottom basement price. So I know it's virtually impossible to get good quality at that price. So you're more than likely getting oxidized, again, very, very low quality fish oil at that price. So I recommend definitely using a tier one supplement company that's going to ensure the highest quality possible. And also, I like my fish oil that has essentially triglyceride form. It's, it's not an ethyl ester form, it's triglyceride. And what that does is it allows higher level of absorption when we deal with fish oil. Now again, we kind of see that with krill oil. Krill oil has a phospholipid bond that allows for higher absorption. Krill oil is great. Again, it's got EPA and DHEA in there. It's got EPA at a lower level, but that phospholipid bond allows it to be more potent. Again, krill's great. It's got the astanthin in there, which helps stabilize the fat so it doesn't rancidify or develop uh, what's called lipid peroxidation. And again, with a good quality fish oil company, a lot of times they'll have a little bit of vitamin E or rosemary in there to help provide the antioxidants to help stabilize it so it doesn't, it doesn't have lipid peroxidation or rancidify. So again, krill oil is great. I would still stick with a high quality fish oil if we're trying to drive down inflammation. Okay, if our goal isn't to drive down inflammation and we are already in good shape, a baseline of fish oil, based on what the um, ingredients are, what the dosage on the back of the bottle would be, is a good starting dose. Again, fish oil to drive down inflammation because we're modulating this EPA here, this, this COX-3 enzyme here. We're not reducing it like we would here with the COX-2. We're actually having a modulation by decreasing the prostaglandin-3. We're not reducing the enzyme over here. So this is definitely a better situation, all right? So overall here, it takes about two years for the fat membrane, the, the cell membrane, to become reconstituted with new fats from the diet. So a lot of people have very junky cell membranes because of poor trans fats, lots of omega-6. So we really want to be eating a good healthy diet, good healthy animal products, reduce all of the refined vegetable oils, and then bring in some fatty fish in here, and we'll start to see this ratio of one to four start becoming more likely, meaning we're gonna have maybe four times the omega-6 to omega-3 versus 50. Really simple, high quality meats that are pasture or naturally raised, good vegetables, again, cutting out the refined vegetable oils, and then also really eating about four to five, I'd say four servings of good quality fatty fish per week is a good baseline on top of that. If you're eating about four to five fatty fish a week, Maybe you could just do one gram or even a half a gram of fish oil a week. If you're not eating enough, then you may want to go up to about two grams per day as kind of a maintenance dose. It really depends on how much you're already getting with your diet. My recommendation is about four to five servings of good quality fatty fish per week. So again, inflammation is driven down by high quality fish oil. We're not going to get the best benefit with flax. And if we're eating excessive omega-6s, which are gonna be primarily driven by the refined vegetable oils, we're gonna be bringing up here this arachidonic acid pathway. Again, arachidonic acid by itself is not bad. It's, it's very healthy. It's actually essential for brain health and neurological health. It's the ratio, it's the skewed ratio here. So we're still gonna get arachidonic acid with animal products. It's we don't wanna drive it up excessively and we're driving it up excessively with the omega-6 refined vegetable oils. So again, if you have an excessive or inflammation-based condition, which most people do, whether it's leaky guts, or maybe an autoimmune condition or digestive issues or fatigue or thyroid imbalances, you want to dig a little bit deeper. And the first place you have to look is inflammation. Again, you can feel free and click on screen or below to get a hold of me. I have some free video series you can check out. Subscribe to my YouTube channel as well on screen so you can get access to more of my cutting edge videos that will be coming your way very soon. Again, this is Dr. J here signing off. Have a great day.